Uh, you know, I think this is the first time that God has addressed Job up to now. Of course, briefly, it has been Elihu. Uh, and then God uh, begins to talk to Job. Job 38, 4. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sank... Yes, yeah, seven. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. The creation was and is an exciting and eventful time for the family of God. Amen. Amen. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Literally, the verse would read, in the absolute beginning of all created things, the Father the Word and the Holy Spirit created out of nothing the heavens and the earth. That's true. So we know then that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit were all present at the creation and all took place, uh, all took part rather in the creation. You remember in John 1, what is it, 4, I think, or uh, uh, 3, uh, says all things were made by him, and without him, nothing was made that is made. Mm. Um, Hebrews 11, verse 2. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Amen. Paul said in Colossians, uh, all things were created by him and for him. So, Jesus, or the person who became Jesus, I should say, was present and active in the creation. And we remember in Genesis 1, it says, uh, you know, darkness was upon the face of the deep. Uh, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the, of, of the deep. And the Holy Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. So, Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit were all there, and all participated in the creation. Uh, and of course, we want to pay special note to the fact that Jesus was there and he created everything in the beginning. Nothing was made apart from him that was made. Uh, the angels were there too. Verse 7 well, six and seven. To what were its foundations fastened or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Now, this expression, the morning stars, it's plural. Jesus is the bright and morning star, he says in Revelation. I am the bright and morning star. But we know that in prophecy, stars are what? Angels. Angels. Mm -hmm. Jesus is referred to, even in Judges, the passage we were reading today, as the angel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I, I seriously believe, I mean, it's, it's been my observation, I'll say, that whenever the Old Testament says the angel of the Lord, it is always the word of who appears. Amen. Jesus is not an angel, never has been according to our typical concept of the word angel, but the fact that uh, the word angel means messenger, yes. Amen. He is the messenger 
of God. He's the messenger of the new covenant uh, exclusively. He made appearances in the Old Testament. Um, and every time he made appearances, he did convey a message from God. Now, this expression, sons of God, you know, back in Genesis, where it says that the sons of, of God married the daughters of men, uh, people have contended that sons of God are the angels, and it means that angels uh, married the daughters of men. Can't be because Jesus said to the Pharisees about those who participate in the final resurrection. He said, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels of God. So, the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 cannot be angels. Amen. But here, we're looking at the creation before the creation of Adam and Eve. And it says, all the sons of God shouted for joy. Well, even if Adam and Eve had been created at that time, it wouldn't say all the sons of God because there were only two. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think in this context, sons of God are angels because that's all that there was who could be called sons of God. But whether you agree or disagree with that doesn't matter. The point that I'm wanting to make is that the angels were present at the creation. They beheld the laying of the foundation of the earth, of the whole creation. They beheld the laying of the cornerstone of creation. The angels were there. So, in our text that kind of you know, covers uh, this theme. The great is the mystery of godliness. God was revealed in the flesh, well, manifested in the flesh. Uh, and also then uh, it says he was seen by angels. And I just want us to understand and to know for sure that the angels were present at the creation and they beheld Jesus laying the foundation of creation and laying the cornerstone of the creation. The angels were there. The angels saw him creating the heavens and the earth. Jesus was seen by angels. Uh... He was seen at the creation. He was also seen by Abraham on the plains of Mamre, remember? Mm -hmm. The Lord came, and there were two angels, one on each oh, side. Okay, the two witnesses that were always with Jesus. Okay. The angels saw him then. The angels beheld him at his birth. Remember, to the shepherds, the sky was full of the heavenly host. Can't imagine how many angels that would be. But from horizon to horizon, the sky was filled with the heavenly host. Who said, Fear not, for unto us a son is born, and unto you or rather unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Uh, they announced the birth of Jesus. They were present 
at the birth of Jesus. So a multitude of the heavenly host beheld his birth, and probably all of them did, and it was just the, the ones that filled the sky uh, who announced the birth. And even if all of outer space mm. <laughs> From one black hole to another was filled with angels that still would not be all of the angels of heaven. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. Angels saw him at his death, his burial, and his resurrection. They were witnesses. You remember the two witnesses back in Revelation? who, when Jesus died on the cross, those two witnesses also died in the streets of Jerusalem and were dead until Jesus arose and they also then arose. You remember there were two angels? wonder why two all the time. <laughs> you remember there were two angels at the tomb? They beheld his burial. They also beheld his resurrection because the stone was rolled away. No man could have done that. The stone was rolled away and Peter looked in and there was an angel sitting at the head and one at the foot of where Jesus had lain. At the ascension, you remember that? Behold, two men stood by him in white apparel. And Jesus went up from them. And it was those two men who said to the others, Why are you gazing up into heaven? What are you looking for? <laughs> this same Jesus will return as he has been taken. Amen. The angels will behold his return. You remember uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Amen. He was seen by angels. Okay, now. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Uh, and I'm not preaching today exclusively about Jesus being seen uh, by angels. But uh, if it seems to you that we have left the subject of Jesus being seen by angels, fear not, we will come back to it. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 3. And we'll read 3 through 6. Colossians 1, verses 3 through 6. We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven of which you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. Now listen to this, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit and so on. The next thing in uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 says he was seen by angels. He was preached in the world. He was preached to the Gentiles. So what did Paul say here? He said, let me find my place. I'm looking too far down in the passage. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, the end of verse 5. 
of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. And uh, Wednesday evening we saw in Revelation 14 that it is the eternal gospel, mm -hmm. the infinite gospel, the everlasting gospel, which has come to you, and notice as it has also in all the world. Before the end of the first century, Jesus was preached to the world. He was preached to the Gentiles. They took uh, Mark 16, 15 to heart. In Mark 16, 15, what did Jesus say? Preach the gospel. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. They did it. They did it. No. By the time Paul wrote to the church at Colossae, the whole world had heard the gospel. Amen. And that wasn't a lot of years either. So, we kind of remember, we've talked about this, that the promise to Abraham did not neglect the Gentiles. The premillennialists will never mention that, they'll never agree to it, but you can show it to them in the Word. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at it here in a second. That the promise to Abraham included the Gentiles. So we're going to go back to Genesis. And there are a couple of places that we could read, but we're only going to read one of them. Uh, Genesis chapter 22, I believe it is, in verse 15. Genesis 22, verse 15. There. Okay, Genesis 22, verses 15 through 18. Then the angel of the Lord has to be the word. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord Jehovah, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And of course, you know, every premillennial person that's ever been born uh, believes that's talking about the Jews. But look at 18. In your seed, all the nations mm -hmm. of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. And the Lord repeated that again to Abraham in chapter 26. Because you have done this, in your seed, all the nations of the earth, all of the Gentiles... Nations is one of the synonyms for Gentiles. All the Gentiles of the earth shall be blessed. Now, Abraham saw Jesus on the plains of Mamre. We said that. Uh, Jesus has been preached in the whole world at least once. Mm -hmm. um, and now, we're going to see that Jesus is the seed of Abraham in uh, Galatians 3, verse 16. Galatians 3, 16.
Now we're going to stay here a little bit today, just for a little while. Galatians 3, verse 16, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. Christ is the seed of Abraham. Okay. I'm going to just do a little uh, readdressing here. Back to the angels having seen Jesus, we are seen by angels. Angels, unlike God, are not all seeing, they are not omnipresent, they are not omniscient, they don't know everything. Uh, <laughs> omnipresent, omniscient, and, well, anyway. <laughs> omnipresent, they, you know, angels cannot be everywhere at one time. They, they have to move to be in certain places. So they're not omnipresent, not omniscient, and not whatever that other <laughs> omni word is. <laughs> I can't think. But anyway, angels do see us. We are seen by angels. You remember in Hebrews chapter 1, let's uh, just uh, flip over to that for a second here. Hebrews chapter 1. Beginning in 13. Huh? Omnipotent. They are not omnipotent. <laughs> Thank you. They're not all powerful. Amen. Oh, they're powerful, but they're not all powerful. Thank you. See. <laughs> Where were we going? Hebrews. We are in Hebrews chapter 1. I didn't write it up here. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 1. Thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. He wrote one. <laughs> Verse thirteen. Every time I put a cap like this in my mouth, I think, oh, I hope Arthur didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's marker not to touch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Hebrews 1.13. But to the which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Mm -hmm. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? You'll never find the word, the expression, guardian angels in the Bible. No such thing as guardian angels. There are. This is the closest that will ever come to a concept of what I guess probably the whole world calls guardian angels. But notice here, they're not called guardian angels, they're called ministering spirits. Ministering spirits. And they're only sent unto those who will inherit salvation. Mm. which means Christians, okay? So, you know, the little three-year-old, four-year-olds out playing in the backyard don't have... There's nothing in the Bible that says they have angels surrounding them. Mm. Now, Jesus did tell uh, the Pharisees, he said, uh, forbid them not and allow them to come to me for their angels always 
Behold the face of my Father in heaven. So, you know, little ones do have angels, but they're not called guardian angels. <laughs> and, you know, we could even say, well, you know, if those little ones die, they will inherit salvation. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, I think, the closest we can come there as far as angels protecting children. Uh, but we definitely know that angels are sent forth not as guardian angels, but as ministering spirits to us who will inherit salvation. And then, uh, do you remember Hebrews 13, 1, where Paul says, do not be forgetful to entertain strangers, for in so doing, some have entertained angels unaware. So, you see a person walking down the street or whatever, uh, you know, you think, well, you know, they could be an angel in human form that, that God has sent for some reason. Be careful, though, in ascribing that to people right. and saying, well, I believe they were an angel in human form, you know, because uh, we would have to know a whole lot more about that person before we would ascribe that to them. Right. For example, if someone's talking to you and there's alcohol on their breath, they're not an angel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't think so. No. <laughs> So, you know, we have to be careful. But just realizing that, uh, you know, the uh, Lord has said, be careful to entertain strangers. Amen. Uh, so, we are seen by angels. Also, we have the everlasting gospel to preach. Amen. Okay, Jesus, the gospel, has been preached in all the world back in the day. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7, I believe. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 7. Second Corinthians is before Galatians, just the book ahead of Galatians, actually. Second Corinthians 3. Um, do I have the right verse? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting ready to say that. <laughs> that ain't it, is it? Well. <laughs> Mystery of death. <laughs> Might it have been First Corinthians? Let's see. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's Second Corinthians four, verse seven. Sorry about that. But you were testing us. I was. I wanted to make sure Larry was awake. <laughs> Today he is. Strong, his mouth, so he's awake. Do you know that's that's the straw that Arthur was chewing on this morning as he no, talked? No one. <laughs> okay. No. He he has a way of doing that. You know. One Frank came in and he made my coffee. Where do you think Frank got it? No, I didn't get I'm it. I'm still no, teasing. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> the worst thing. I'm still teasing. So he touched it. <laughs> that's okay. I'm just teasing anyway. Yeah, he's that's a teasing. <laughs> I don't see green on him. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. It's a simple statement. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Mm, amen. Now, that is predicated here in verse 6. For it is uh, the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Talking about the creation who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels 
Mm-hmm. So, here's a question about that. Do we take Mark 16, 15 seriously? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If in that short span of years in the first century the whole world had heard the gospel, Um, why hasn't, for example, the whole city of Ranson or even the twin towns of Ranson and Charlestown heard the gospel? Right. Mm-hmm. They have heard it. No, they haven't. No, not everybody. Okay, they don't obey it. They haven't heard it, Larry. Okay. They've heard denominational versions of it. But they have never heard the truth. Many of them. That's That's true. true. Many of them. Okay. I understand where you're going now. Yeah, the the majority of the Catholics are obeying what they've heard. Mm -hmm. The Methodists are obeying what they've heard. The Baptists are obeying what they've heard. But which ones of them have heard this? That's right. And why haven't they? Mm hmm. Do we take the message to heart? Yes. The commandment, do we take it seriously? Mm-hmm. Okay. And finally, back in Galatians 3 and verse 29. Remember that verse 16 says that Christ is the seed of Abraham. In Galatians 3.29, it says, and if you, if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That takes care of being seen by angels because we're heirs of the promise. They're ministering spirits to us. We're also the seed of Abraham through Christ because he is the seed of Abraham. So, Jesus has been seen by angels. Pre-birth, birth, and post-birth. As he who was, who is, and always will be. He was preached to the whole world by the time Paul wrote to the church at Colossae. And he is the seed of Abraham because through him our hope of the promise is by being the seed of Abraham through Jesus. So the hymn of decision today says ring out the message. What we sang uh, about the angels in the first song this morning Um, we sang about the crucifixion. And now we're going to sing about this treasure that we have in earthen vessels. Bring out the message. Bring out the message. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, 282. Number 282. And please stand if you would. If you can't, that's okay. Thank you. 
ostracize or disfellowship you. <laughs> We're not standing. That's what I said. We will not. We're tough around here. <laughs> Back in your room. Back. Go to your room. <laughs> okay. When Linda comes back, we'll start this because we need her uh, in the chorus. But this song we practice quite a bit and um, hope it comes back. Learned it, it will. <laughs> it's not coming back yet. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> Oh, and the uh, closing is number 14. Okay. Yeah. Well, no we'll cross get that to bridge it. when we get there. Yeah, they trip over it. Right now, we're going to be finding yeah. 282. Mm -hmm. to bring out mm -hmm. the message. Good job. I don't want to do something. <laughs> you can't what? There's a couple of pieces, Phil. Turn it off. Oh, well, we'll worry about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to sing our hymn of decision. 282. Okay, I'll remind the women of how it goes. It's just one note. The men yeah, sing in the chorus. <laughs> in the chorus, the men sing, ring out. And the women sing, merrily ring the word. Speed it away, or land, message divine, and see, speed it away, same note. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then uh, the women go, let it cheer the lost and those in doubt, darkness and doubt. Okay, got it? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay. There's a message if you're true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Ring it out, ring it out. It will give them courage new, it will help them to be true. Ring it out, ring it out, ring it out.
like Tina Zar instructor. Yeah. <laughs> She's the snot. I messed up a couple times. Yeah. 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 Our closing hymn is going to be number what? 14. 14. Um, and we're actually on, uh, you, know, you could do the second or third chorus, because we're uh-huh. almost near the end of the month. Mm-hmm. Or, second, second or third, or third verse. It's up to you. Second or third verse. Pick your verse. Oh, <laughs> oh this isn't for the whole month? This was, but um, we technically, yeah. No, this is for May, yeah, but we... No, April, but we technically <laughs> sang another song last April. week for the closing. So you pick your verse you want to sing. Two. Maybe if you would have came to rehearsal, you would know. You're confusing me. Yeah. It wasn't hard. <laughs> one, two, three, or four. Yeah, I'm pick a verse. That's all this? you need to do. Is this the third week? Three. Last week. Third week. Third week. He speaks in riddles. Just like the Riddler. Just, all you have to do is pick a verse. Pick a verse. Third week, third verse. There you go. A voice came got. to me just a minute ago that said that. Very good. I don't know why they made it complicated. Uh, did we sing this song last month? No. We started out singing something else. This is the one that we're supposed to do for the month, but then you made your song, and I had us sing that for the chorus. Yeah, the new song. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the church at Rand's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're you're not as confused as I look. (laughs) (laughs) Terrible, terrible. All right. As I focus this in, so let's uh, do the third stanza since, uh, you know what? If any of you are as confused as I am right now, just do what what our kid said. You can pray first. Uh -uh. Oh. Yeah. We, we are supposed to. <laughs> Man. She's to walk out. out. She, she has, has been helpful. What's going she on. has. A lot. Yes. Okay. yes. Arthur. Yeah. Uh oh. I told you be careful. She's our mm-hmm. You remember? Yeah. I should have said beware. Yeah, but you said be careful, so. Ah. You left room for yeah, me to go. Well, <laughs> Okay, Brother Arthur, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm thankful that that my right-hand girl is here. She's always been my right-hand girl <laughs> from the time she was little. <laughs> she, we were joined at the hip. Especially your senior year. Joined at the late work. <laughs> okay, so, Brother Arthur, would you please have... Our closing prayer. Yes, sir. Almighty and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the words that were spoken today, for your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, who is the word. He is the life. He is the way. He is the truth. And we do not exist if we are not in him. There's no life without Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the message that uh, Brother Mark brought to us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we will use it to further the kingdom because there's a lot of uh, untruth out there in this world. And it is our task as Christians, your people, to bring the good news. Help us, Lord, in this effort that we do when we leave from here to live the life that Jesus tells us to live. Because we have given our life to him. It's no longer our life. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord, daily to seek after the kingdom, to further the kingdom in every effort that we do. Help us, Lord, to preach to those in Ranson and Charlestown and our surrounding areas. Help this church to be a light in the dark world, filled with false light. Because that's what Satan does. Mm -hmm. Counterfeit. Thank you, Lord, for um, giving Brother Mark the ability to preach your word. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the hearts for uh, 
understanding. Yes. Help us, Lord, to commit it to our life. Mm-hmm. Please bless the food that has been prepared. Uh, bless those hands that have prepared it, Father. We thank you, Lord, for that, um, the physical food. But more importantly, Lord, we thank you so much for the spiritual food. Because that will outlast any physical food that we may mm. partake of. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that is here. We pray that your message will go out, it will conquer, and it will provide a safe haven for those that are seeking refuge. We ask this all in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. 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 Okay. Third stanza, thank you, Armpit. I thought about this a little bit before. All day long. <laughs> No. Why didn't you get done and say, oh my, I forgot. Yeah, thank you. Oh, she knows how many times I've done that. <laughs> but it went sailing away. It's good. Sailing. Soon after that. Okay. <laughs> I want to live above the world Though Satan's darts at me are hurled For faith has called for the joyful sound The song of saints on higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven.